it, it's really important that you find the kind of magazine that you you want to work on and you try and get some experience doing that make sure you really do make sure you're not kind of starry-eyed about oh I want to work on magazines it's going to be brilliant because as often as not it's you know long hours late deadlines all that kind of stuff but it's it can be very rewarding and if it's something you want to do it is quite a competitive industry because it is good fun um, that would give somebody the edge for me somebody who shows they've looked at my product understood what it is and they and have the skills and the ability to do it I mean I didn't do science as a degree and yet I ended up on a science magazine and that was because I was interested enough and a bit lucky and I worked really hard and what is most important is that you've read the magazine that you're this is going to sound so basic but you'd be amazed you've read the magazine that you're trying to pitch articles to if you're a freelance and you're pitching a, an appropriate feature for the kind of magazine get some work experience um, you know everybody has to do their thing with the admin and getting to know the industry because contacts are important and also just understanding how a magazine team runs and how it works make sure you really want to do it as well because it is a bit of a slog at the beginning um, there's no point doing it if actually you'd rather be doing something that's going to earn you a ton more money and after I finished my degree I went to London and did some work experience on the big it was at Nat Mags um, which is the national magazine company they do things like Cosmo and Good Housekeeping and Zest that kind of stuff and I got my first job there on having a baby magazine which is a little was a little sister publication to Good Housekeeping at the time and I found that I wasn't massively interested in the kids, but I was quite interested in learning how to, the stories that involve the science again, you know, the sort of medical stuff, the health stuff. Um, I was there for nine months or so, and then the company bought another company which already had a parenting title. They closed ours, um, and a job came up on Focus. Um, and so I stayed, I, I moved over onto Focus as editorial assistant, and I was there for a year or so. Um, and then Focus was all set to be closed in London and it was bought out by a company down here in Bristol where I moved with the magazine, became their staff writer, had a fantastic few years actually. Staff writing is just so much fun on a magazine like Focus, which is popular science and technology. Um, and then when the BBC took Origin over, it became BBC Focus. Uh, I've got a copy of it on one of these files actually, because this is what it looks like now. Uh, so you can see it's a, it's a BBC title now and it's their main science and technology title. Knowledge was a spin-off from Focus. I worked my way up from staff writer to deputy editor. I did features editor for a while as well. And then the publishers came up with the idea that it might be nice to do an international product, uh, which became Knowledge, which was a combination in the end of features from Focus, from BBC Wildlife and BBC History. And we basically take these articles, uh, draw them together, re-edit them, completely redesign them, bring them up to date, because some of them we take from a long time back, put a new front and, end, front and back onto the end of the, t of the magazine, and put it out six times a year. So that's knowledge. And yeah, it's bi-monthly. We launched in the States in 2008, and since then we've started selling licensed editions in Asia, in Brazil, in India, there's a joint venture there, uh, and we just brought it over to the UK six months ago. As the staff writer, you get sent out to to do all the fun stuff. So I went over to Kenya and studied lions out there for a couple of weeks on an Earthwatch trip. I went to oh, was it the Namib Desert? Uh, did some work with meerkats out there. I'm quite interested in in zoology and animal behaviour and evolutionary psychology. Those kind of things really interest me. Um, so yeah, that was great fun. You just sort of, you know, get paid to go somewhere really interesting and, and write about it. On knowledge, it's been much more about sort of taking this idea from the sort of very germ of an idea and being the one to see it through to, um, to what it is now um, and make them for a different audience. I mean, it is for a different audience to focus. With all three of the source titles, you assume a prior interest in science or nature or history. Um, with knowledge, it's much more for somebody who thinks, hmm, I might be interested in that, and just, you know, more like somebody who would read The Economist or Intelligent Life, something like that. Um, but this is more accessible and has tons of really nice pictures in it. Knowledge is slightly different because we do have the advantage of having the content there already. If you were on Focus or Wildlife, you would have to come up with the ideas or read through the freelance pitches and put your book together that way. I do have the advantage that I can sit there and browse through all these back issues. Um, 
and select things to put to put together. But the basic um, premise is exactly the same. You know, you have to you come in and you need to decide what's going to go in the magazine. There are some things that are the same each issue, like the news section. We have a um, what we call a big idea at the back here, which is um, a regular heavy article about um, life's great mysteries. Uh, we always have this portfolio section in the middle, which is 10 pages of lush wildlife photography. We always have um, reviews, of book reviews, um, web reviews at the back. We always have um, a column here at the end. And um, you'll find if you look at many magazines that all of them will have this kind of signposts so that the reader isn't just plunging their way through stuff. The rest of it is pretty much up to me, what I put in. For knowledge, I have a pretty much a broad, uh, an equal split of science, nature, and history. And there are some subjects, like Darwin, for instance, which is the science of the history of nature, that covers all three of our editorial pillars. Essentially speaking, we come up with the designs, flow the copy through, sub it all back to fit, check it's still making sense. We do a lot of cross-checking. It comes to me in this form. Um, sort of, I get a print out like that, which I then cover in red pen to make, because it's amazing how even now with all the stuff on screen that you get, um, you know, all the computers, all the software you use, there's still nothing that quite beats sitting down and actually reading it the way somebody's going, or as close to the way somebody's going to really read it. And you'd be amazed how much stuff slips through. Once I've signed it all out, <clears throat> we're finished with it, but the art team, has, the art guy has to send it to, um, convert it to the PDF format, send it off to the reprographics department, goes off to the printers, gets you know packed, distributed, any marketing stuff gets put in, all this. So there's and then sent out to the shops. So there's a lot to do with it. But we're we're well into the next one by then. There's clearly a need for um, other for magazines like Knowledge, like Focus, like Wildlife, like History. Otherwise, specialist titles like this wouldn't exist. So I think to say that everybody is only interested in celebrity can't possibly be true, or that we wouldn't be able to print things like this. There are lots of reasons that people read magazines, one of which is escapism and one of which is to sort of live vicariously through other people. There's so much of celebrity culture now on television as well, isn't there, online. And also they're really easy to read, aren't they? You pick them up, you look at the pictures, you recognise the people, you feel like you've got a kinship, a relationship with these people um, and then you discard it again. I mean, that's a different kind of reading. With something like, more like knowledge and focus, um, I would argue that it's it's escapism, but it's also a, a drive to learn, to understand more about the world around you. I mean, that's one reason why I've gone, the main reason really, why I've gone into science journalism rather than into celebrity journalism. But there's lots of discussions in publishing circles at the moment about how to actually make money um, with online. I think absolutely, online is going to be a way forward. Things like the app, uh, the um, iPhone and the apps are things that our company is already exploring. Um, so are others, Rupert Murdoch's um, trying to get people to pay for news content, all this. Um, I think there is still a place, there will always be a place for quality journalism as opposed to just information all over the place. And I think if people want quality journalism, they're going to have to pay for it in some form or other. So hopefully that will be enough to keep magazines alive, even if it's not in the paper format. I also think that, at least for a while, people still like to hold a paper product. Products, um, products like the um, iPad are starting to change that, aren't they, already? You know, cause, um, or the Kindle as well for books. Um, in 20 years, who knows? Uh, I hope that they will still exist. Certainly the same with books. But I mean, in my mind, it maybe seems a little like with records. I mean, there's still fans that love to collect old LPs, aren't there? Or, or even CDs still. But nobody really has to buy it like that anymore. Maybe when enough time goes by, magazines will also be, be a similar thing. Who can tell? I hope so. I think, I think you get something so tactile from a good quality magazine. I mean, if you just... Imagine looking at that on a computer screen. You still can, and particularly with touch screens and things, you know, you can get really, really close and see all the amazing, breathtaking detail, but you can't smell the pages.